America. Let's get down to some monsters. Monsters. Save me, Daddy. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jeff. Did I ruin your intro? No, no, not at all. I didn't have it ready yet, so oh. you're playing down. Yeah. yeah. Here we are again. <sighs> Welcome back to Monsters Talking About. Go figure that us. one out. <laughs> Go Thanks. Figure. Thanks, old man. What is that, Jay? Monsters Talking About Them. And this week we have the Flat Woods Monster. Whoever sent that into our feed, I'm not sure who that was. It wasn't me, but I took that up. It's a very interesting one. I uh, found out about that uh, from my friend uh, Kenny Bones. Uh, I did an interview with him a few years ago. He is a mason. He's in a, a legendary stoner rock band called Negative Reaction. I talked with him on the phone. He mentioned uh, that, and he also invited uh, myself and possibly a few other people to go Bigfoot hunting on his property in West Virginia because he says there are some out there. Well, let's do that. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Let's go on to the Flatwoods Monster. Come on. Yay! Well, consequently... Uh, the Flatwoods Monster was seen in Braxton County in West Virginia on September 12th in 1952. Hmm, a lot of West Virginia fucking cryptoids. I know. It's I guess, map. well, there's not much else to see. Yeah. Besides hills and forests, but... So, at about 7.15 p.m. on September 12th in 1952, uh, these two brothers, Edward and Fred May, and their one friend, Tommy Heyer... Um, who were 13, 12, and 10, respectively, witnessed a bright object come across the sky. The object appeared to have... Uh, it, it was kind of like a meteorite almost in, 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 in appearance, and it, the object appeared to have come to rest and crash-landed on a nearby farm. And the boys, um, as soon as they saw it crash, they uh, went home to the May brothers' mother, their house, Kathleen May, where they reported seeing the, quote, UFO uh, land crash land in the hills by the farm. And from there, uh, Mrs. May, accompanied by these three boys and some other local children and a 17-year-old West Virginia National Guardsman named Eugene Lemon, tra traveled to the farm, also known as a Fisher Farm, is where, uh, in an effort to locate the UFO is where it supposedly crash-landed here. Now, um, the soldier's dog ran ahead out of sight and suddenly began barking and moments later ran back to the group with his tail between its legs. Hmm. Now, we've seen that a lot of times in different stories. Um, either the dogs refuse to go by it or they come back scared. Absolutely. Now, uh, after the group traveled about a quarter mile here, they reached the top of a hill. And from the top of the hill, they saw a large pulsating uh, fireball. It said it was about 50 feet to the right after they got to the top of the hill. And when they got there, they smelled a, a pungent mist. It made their eyes their eyes and uh, nose, noses burn. Pungent mist. Hmm. Hmm. It sounds nice. Name of my metal band. Pungent Mist. Yeah. Pungent Mist. Where are you for Iron Maiden? Own. <laughs> but uh, um, the National Guardsman noticed a uh, two small lights over to the left of the object underneath the tree. Uh, he directed his flashlight towards them, and it revealed a, uh, a creature. Now, this creature uh, emitted a shrill hissing noise before it was started to walk towards him, kind of. But instead of walking, it glided like it was floating almost. Kind of like had some kind of um, propulsion or anti gravity, and mm. and it went towards them for about twenty feet, but then it began to change direction immediately back towards the uh, the fireball or the craft, the red light. Now I'm just going to make a note here now before I get into other witness accounts, just to give you the actual description overall from all these witnesses. Yeah, I want to hear what this motherfucker looks like. Now most of the witnesses agree upon these points that it was at least seven feet tall. It had a black bar the black body and a dark kind of a glowing face, but it was still dark, and an elongated head shaped like the ace of spades. Okay. What Inside, about his, what about his genitals? Not mentioned. Oh, Trust shit. me, I look for it. That's what I was nice thinking. Fat, eight inches. <laughs> Unfortunately not. God damn it. So inside the uh, head, it was a circular kind of window. Um, it was dark except for two lights uh, from which a pale blue beams extended straight ahead. So kind of like eyes or headlights, but kind of, a, kind of like a helmet kind of head, but it was hmm. ace of spade shaped. Um, had a large circular cowling behind it, kind of like a hood that was behind its head. Um, the body was apparently inhumanly shaped and was clad in dark pleated and exoskeleton, later described kind of shadowy. 
Uh, some accounts of, on the record uh, that the creature appeared to have no visible arms due to the incredible speed. They couldn't tell if it had arms or not, but it moved very fast as it was floating. And others reported long, stringy arms protruding from the front and uh, of its bodies that had kind of like long, claw-like fingers, kind of like greys that had been reported to have. Yeah, you know, that description kind of reminds me of those stick creatures we saw walking on security camera. You remember those? Yeah, but from the drawings I've seen of this, they're not close. This thing was more of a, almost like a floating space suit. Yeah, it sounds futuristic. It sounds like this is actually uh, not much of a monster and more of like some kind of uh, alien. Yeah, that's. I was like, is, is it, can we confuse this with Bigfoot? No, it sounds, yeah. Space. Yeah, it was, this was classed as a either a cryptid slash close encounter of the third kind. Okay. That's how it was classed on all the sites that I looked at. But um, now the group fled in panic after this. Oh, really? After, after, after seeing it change direction towards them and then go back towards the ship. Pussies. I would have fought the thing. I would have thrown down. Yeah, I would have punched the thing in the head. Hey, alien, what are you, gay? You Come <laughs> But um, so they fled they, when they got back home. The uh, Mrs. May, whom the boys had contacted the police in the local newspaper. A Mr. A. Lee Stewart, who was a co owner of the local newspaper, conducted a number of interviews and returned to the site where um, the National Guardsman, oh, sorry, with the National Guardsman Lemon, who had been later that night of the crash. And he reported that there was a sickening burnt metallic odor that was still prevailing around the area. Now, the sheriff and his deputy searched the area separately, but reported finding no trace of the encounter beside, other than the smell. After the event, um, Mr. William and Donna Smith, they were investigators uh, associated with civilian saucer investigation. Of course. Before, but they obtained a number of accounts from witnesses. They spoke to a mother and her 21-year-old daughter who had claimed to have encountered a creature with the same appearance and odor a week prior to the event prior to the September 12th events. Uh, the daughter was so badly affected that she was confined to the Clarksburg Hospital for three weeks. The mother of uh, Eugene Lemon said that uh, at, at the approximate time of the crash, um, her house shook and the radio cut out for 45 minutes. Has there ever seen more electronic interference? You know, I'm looking at a picture of this Flatwood, Flatwoods monster right now, like drawings and interpretation. It almost looks like a really demented nun. Or someone dressed up. Kind of, yeah. Or almost in colonial black type wear. Because, uh, yeah, it's black and there's some white features on it. Um, but there's a weird hat. Like, it's almost like some kind of weird big colonial hat. Um, very but interesting. A lot of times we've seen these abductions and contact these stories where it may necessarily, the, ent- the entity might render as what you think you're seeing rather than what it actually is. Yes. There's like some kind of programming glitch and it goes to the... People think you're seeing an owl yeah. or you're seeing something else. Yeah. There's some good illustrations that some people have done. Yeah, very cool. They're very cool. Um, so another uh, interview done by this investigation group was the director of the local board of education. And they claim to have seen a flying saucer take off at about 630 in the morning on September 13th, which was the morning after it was sighting. So I guess it kind of corroborated that whatever that was, was able to get it. Um, jump start the engine and take off again. So it came down here, did uh, just rummage around the neighborhood, terrorized some kids and dogs, and then took off. So it would seem. Yeah. Now, after uh, encountering the creature, several members of the group on September 12th, the boy and their mom and the other people, reported suffering from similar symptoms which persisted for some time. They were all, all experienced uh, irritation of the nose, swelling of the throat, uh, the National Guardsman suffered from vomiting and convulsions throughout that same night, uh, had difficulties with his throat for uh, several weeks afterwards. And a doctor who had examined several people um, is reported to have described these symptoms as being similar to uh, mustard gas. What about radiation poisoning? Um, that is something often experienced in these events. Um, I mean, those are not dissimilar. I mean, you know, mustard gas, radiation poisoning, I mean... You do have some vomiting, and I mean, radiation poison has a little, I guess, more uh, like a lesions on the skin and some burning, uh, possibly if you're that close to a heat source, but I don't know. Um, you can get, I mean, radiation poison is nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, yeah. fever, dizziness, fatigue. Um, 
Yeah, so they said mustard gas. I would put in radiation uh, poisoning because that is also that that has also been said. It's very common. A lot of UFO sightings, high yeah. radiation with a lot of close encounters. When you get to that bright object, uh, it's putting off a lot of fucking energy. Yes, and so you, I want to make a leap in logic and say that that creature, it was wearing a radiation suit of some sort. Correct. Yeah, it crash landing. It was trying to. Do some fucking repairs. It's engine. It's like, oh, fuck, it's leaking radiation. Dude, I blew a tire. Bad. <laughs> blew a tire. Midas is not even open. It's Sunday. No one's going to be around. I Sunday, fix- I'm leaking radiation. It's 100 miles to Chicago. I have a pack of cigarettes. Yeah. Triple A ain't going to come out this far. Shit. So, um, years later, we run into John Keel here again. And he interviewed a couple who claimed that on the evening following the original sighting, a 10 to 15, uh, uh, sorry, that 10 to 15 miles to the southwest uh, of the uh, original encounter, they encountered a 10 foot tall creature emitting a foul odor. It approached their stalled car, then returned to uh, the woods. So out of the woods and they had their stalled car on the road, they found this very large creature that approached them with this similar kind of stinking odor. They said moments later, after it returned to the woods, a pulsating sphere arose from the trees and ascended into the sky. So perhaps this thing had been visiting the area for unknown reasons. Hmm. Now, skeptics have claimed that the May that May and her companions had seen a meteorite in an owl, which I think is complete bullshit. A meteorite and an owl. They saw a meteorite hit the ground and there was an owl there. Yeah, no shit. Or other things say mass hysteria, things like that. Swamp gas with owls. But when you have, you know, the police and a newspaper investigators and other people, you know, a day later or, or a few weeks before encountering a similar thing that smelled and had a foul kind of pungent smell like that, kind of gives you would make you think it's mass hysteria, especially when there was stuff before that the actual incident happened. Now, it was also curious. This was in 1952. In 1952, there was a 1952. Of course, it happened the same year, but there's a Washington, D.C. UFO incident. The big one. Yeah, the big one where they flew over as kind of a, a show of force. Yeah, it, um, I guess took, took it straight out of the wiki, but a series of unidentified flying objects reports from July 12th to July 29th, 1952, over Washington, D.C. The most publicized, publicized sightings took place at, on consecutive weekends from July uh, 19th to the 20th and 26th to the 27th. UFO historian Curtis uh, Peebles called the incident the climax of the 1950 UFO, 1952 UFO flap, or also the UFO window, like Keel described. Uh, never before or after did Project Blue Book and the Air Force undergo such a tidal wave of UFO reports. You know, it's been rumored that that, uh, that flight over the Capitol um, was actually the Nazis. That they uh, that Nazi technology escaped, and uh, they were in full force, and they decided to fly over to show that they, they were, were still back. around. Yeah, to show that they're still around. And then they got adopted into the super-secret uh, space program of the United States, and uh, this is where we are today, being run by uh, Nazis and their technology. So there's some kind of Nazi shadow government. Yes. That's a good one. That's like the hologram planes thing. That's yeah. actually probably more plausible than the hologram planes. Yeah. <laughs> Rare to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. But that's the interesting Flatwoods monster, which I haven't heard of before. No, it's cool. Years ago, which was actually great. And if we actually want to go Bigfoot hunting that guy's property, I'm down. Yeah, I got to talk with him about it. Uh, but yeah, it should be fun. We, we can do a few days. He's got some trail cams. I'm going to buy one and uh, bring your guns, he said. Oh, for sure. I'll bring the Sega. It's legal in West Virginia. We can go. Because he said uh, the noises he hears, this thing is not friendly. <laughs> Oh, we'll get some GoPros and some night vision goggles. It'll be like fucking aliens when they go down into the exhaust or the reactor. Core. He says he has some night vision already. He just needs some help. So should be a fun time. Um, you want to take a little break here? I'm going to come back and talk about the EU. All right. I'm going to go piss. Yeah, I'm going to go piss real quick. Joe? Uh, I've already went in my pants. So Okay. Well, we'll be back in a few minutes. Here we go. 